This video is a dedication to my pen pals in Colorado and in Ghana. I also have a pen pal in India that has not messaged me back. Hello? Where is my letter? Boom. This is the second video of my What's Up Docs. What I told you in the first video was basically that I was going to use What's Up Doc as a way to give you updates and get original content from Docs Castle Media. This is the video point of view of my thoughts instead of y'all reading. So for episode two of What's Up Doc, I basically want to give you background information for how to start a blog. Starting a blog is really easy. People frequently ask me after they find out that I am a blogger that they wanna know how they can become bloggers too. Everything that you see now that a lot of people do as bloggers, I started nine years ago, it was pretty much the same content. Blogging is so many people do it now, and it's no problem. So I want to show y'all like the steps of blogging. Tell y'all what y'all can do to start right now for free if you can. not If you want to take it seriously, this isn't really where you can go. Because I started my blog as a hobby. I make money from what I do, but not necessarily my blog. I make money off of creating art and giving people advice and helping people with social media. I can't really give you too much advice as far as how you can make money with your blog. You can look at someone else's video for that. But right here, I can basically tell you how to start it as a hobby because that's basically what I did. And eventually the things will come to you. You could use it later if you're really successful to make money from it later. The motivation from doing this mainly came from, in January, I joined this app called Slowly, which is a app that is basically for people who like to find pen pals. If you wanna have a pen pal, if you're a type of person that wanna just meet people randomly over internationally like me, you can get the Slowly app. Slowly will match you with someone from across the world that has the same interests as you. And you will develop a friendship through writing letters. The letters deliver at the same speed as they would deliver if you got them from the regular mail. When you're writing a letter and slowly, you're gonna get a letter probably the same time. Like in India, I wrote to one, it took two days to get to me. Which is fine because, you know, you're busy in America, right? In my case, that's what I found out. I'm very busy here compared to all of my pen pals. The Slowly app delivers in two days, so it doesn't matter. It's still the same speed as it was if I was writing you a regular postcard. So, yeah. I got a Slowly app. I met some people. When I was telling people that I was a blogger, I got the question, oh, how can I start a blog? Because when they read my blog, they were really into the things that I wrote about. And they really love Baltimore, y'all. Honestly, they really love like the things that I write, the things that I share, the artists that I share about Baltimore. And then they were interested and was like, well, how can I create a blog so that I could share my culture and what I do? And I was just like, oh, that's cool. We could do that. I can tell you how to start a blog. You know, a lot of people always ask me this, so I want to give y'all some basic tips for how you can start a blog. Number one, you got to find something that motivates you to write a blog or what's, what's going to start you to write a blog. Why do you want to write a blog? Hmm? The reason why I started a blog was before class. My teacher gave us a class assignment, so I needed to get an A. But later on, what made me really like blogging was the fact that I already was a journaler. 
I like to journal all the time. What do I read about that I could write about that I would want to read about? You know, because some things that I didn't see that I wanted to write about. I didn't know that there were so many cool artists in Baltimore, so I wanted to write about them because I wanted to read about them. You gotta find something that motivates you. And if it's a school assignment, let that be that. School motivated me to start a blog. I get questions about how, when you when you start a blog, um, what you name it. Um, when I first started my blog, I named it Doc's Castle Media. It's still Doc's Castle Media. I like it because it's my castle, it's my website, and I made it simple. If I ever wanted to change what I wanted to write about, I would never have to change my name. Because my name has really nothing to do with what I write about. If you're going to choose a name for your blog, make it simple. But if you are going to always write about simple things, or just like one topic all the time, Say music, you can have music in the name of your blog. Anything, if you're gonna continue to write about things, I say, yeah, it's the perfect name for you. The perfect name for me is Doc's Castle because that's my nickname. And basically, it's gonna stay my nickname because that's me, that's how people know me as. So, picking your name is really not that hard. And it's only the second step in how to start your blog. The next important step to write your blog is literally finding the platform to write your blog because the first two things is the motivation and choosing a name. That has nothing to do with the actual technical features of finding a blog, okay? When you're starting off, this is the most important thing you wanna sit here and think. The seriousness of what you wanna do it for, you know, because this is where you wanna invest money if you have to invest money. When I first started, I got a free blog. I was on wordpress.com. The name of my domain name was docscastle.wordpress.com. And it was that way for, I think, the first few years of me blogging. I had a very complete free website. And then like, um, they also give you the option on WordPress at that time when I had one, that you could purchase the name a domain name so at one point my website was just docscastle.com and it was because it was on wordpress.com and I still use like the free features but you want to think about at this time if you want to be a self-hosted domain or if you want to be on a hosted domain what I'm telling you at the beginning docscastle.com was on a hosted domain on wordpress.com there are so many other hosted domains out there. There's Blogger, WordPress. Those are the like top two free blog websites that I've seen people on. When I started, I knew a lot of people that used to have Blogger. It was just free. All you had to do was write what you wanted to write, share what you wanted to share. You didn't have to worry about any kind of templates too much. You could just get a free template that they gave you on their platform and that's all you had to worry about. Right now, I am on a self-hosted domain, which is a lot more money. I am still using WordPress as the administrative dashboard, you know, the platform that I use to post my blog on my self-hosted domain. It's what I use to operate my website, WordPress, a WordPress dashboard. But in, I'm now no longer on WordPress.com. So when you're starting a blog, you want to think about how serious you want to take your blog because getting a self-hosted domain is a lot more money. Getting regular domain on a hosted blog site like WordPress and Blogger is more affordable for people that start off and are blogging for a hobby. I'm now on a self-hosted domain because I am planning to have some tipsy decor to sell you guys. I need more space to hold my content to sell my art. I'm an artist, so I need a bigger website. <laughs> know what you want. Even on a self-hosted domain, you get a basic template if you have WordPress. So I have WordPress on my self-hosted domain, wordpress.org. I just basically got that little thing that they give. They give you something to download, XML file or PHP, whatever it's called. They give you something to download, you put it on your website, and you can get free templates to make your website. And you can download plugins 
to put onto your website to make it better. Um, when you Google things and when you look at stuff on YouTube, it really helps to improve your website. This is the step that I would say the next part of creating a blog for yourself is investing in free templates and really good plugins and things that you really want on your website. Think about all of the stuff that you want to do on your website. Do you want to sell stuff? Do you want to just write and share other people things? Do you want to share about your stuff? There's people that are poets out here. People who share pictures, who just take pictures and share pictures. What do you want to do on your website? I started with WordPress. WordPress has all those type of things. If you're not really good with like HTML, and I was, I've learned how to be really good with HTML just because I work with HTML on my job. I started with HTML a long time ago with MySpace. If you're really good with HTML, you don't mind changing and being real interactive with your website. WordPress is cool. But Blogger, like I said, is a perfect thing to start with. Blogger is a website where they'll give you a template and all you gotta do is you just write something on it. It's good for you. Step number five, you wanna write and create your own content. So after you done found the template, after you done found the plugins, you wanna create the content for the website. After I created my website when I first started, my first blog was about David Letterman. My blog had no connection with the next. And that's okay, because I don't know who I was writing for at that point. I was just writing and never learning how to blog. And that could be cool for you at the beginning. If you just wanna write to learn how to blog, to learn how to do it, that's a good thing to start with. Start creating your own content. Your content will evolve over time the more that you blog. You'll start getting more comfortable with blogging. Over time, I've developed a niche for writing about art in Baltimore. I really enjoy writing about exhibits that I go to. I enjoy writing about artists that I find out. I find that it's very cool to write about. It's all of that. If you don't know what your content is gonna be, what is the purpose of starting a blog? What do you want to start a blog for? Hmm? Probably just to learn. But you won't stay consistent if you don't really have an idea of content of what you want to have on your blog. You want to have an idea of what you want to write about. At the beginning, my idea was to learn how to write. Then it turned to I learned to write about a lot of artists here. Now I'm just trying to create content to help other people. Blogging can take you so many places, people. You want to be consistent if you want to start a blog. Even when you are only blogging to just learn how to blog, you want to stay consistent with it because it's going to teach you how to do it. It also helps you build an audience. When people are expecting you to give them information, they will stay loyal to reading your stuff because they know that this is what you do. People know that I write. People also know that I write about artists. People also know that I write about Thirsty 30 Body. People also know that I am an artist. People come to my website with the expectation that I'm going to provide them with that content. If you want to learn how to blog, you can write about something that can just basically make you want to be consistent on writing a blog about how to write a blog. Look for something that's gonna keep you there. What is your voice in this blogging game? Why don't you find your voice? Find your voice, and that's that. Find your voice. You wanna write things that you wanna read about. For the most part, I wanna read about other artists. I don't see other artists like on my timeline, any, any, any magazines see any other artists on my timeline that not very often but I'm not gonna say that I never see them I do not see them often on like things that I read I want to write about the people that I enjoy I want to see them in the limelight too when I write a box thumbs up post I'm writing because I genuinely enjoy that artist that put out that content and I want to write it in a way that I want to tell people why I like it. And I want to also read it back later. 
a lot of my journalistic aspects for Doc's Castle Media comes with the thought that I'm gonna read this next year and two years from now and look at this and be like, wow, that was such a cool thing. I enjoyed reading that. I've written stuff in 2018 and I'm like, that artist is great. And it makes me go back and go try and look at that artist again. That's the influence of a blogger no matter what, if they make money or not. I don't make money off of that. I'm sharing this as a hobby. Write something that you want to write about. It will motivate you to do it for years. Doc's Thumbs Up, I've been doing Doc's Thumbs Up since like 2015. I like that segment of my blog. You wanna share your content on social media. That is the next step, sharing your content on social media. You want people to read the blog that you created, right? You're not just making it just to be making it. You're making it to also learn how to blog, but the, also the possibilities could be... <sighs> if you're doing this because you're just wanting to learn how to write a blog, sharing on social media might not work for you. But if you're doing this as for a hobby, you wanna share your hobby, share it on social media and share it in a community that is also talking about these type of things too. That is your safe space. Everybody needs a safe space online. Online is really harsh. We live in a world right now where cancel culture is real. When I say sharing in a network that you feel that you are safe in, that is one of the most important things ever on social media now because people are so accustomed to cyberbullying. I've been cyberbullied in the beginning eras of social media. I know what to avoid, what not to post when I'm online because of being cyberbullied, but there is no safety net, no guarantee that says that I will not ever be bullied again on my own stuff. <laughs> the world is crazy. So it is important that when you're writing and sharing your content that you're sharing it with people who care and who, about what you're talking about. You wanna stay away from trolls. They're gonna knock you down. Why would you wanna listen to some people that's gonna knock you down? When you're writing this content or when you're starting a blog, you wanna make sure that you're in an environment that is going to welcome you. When you're in a community starting a blog, you wanna to talk to people who are gonna read your stuff. You wanna interact with people that you also wanna read their things. Sharing on social media is gonna give you your page views. They're gonna give you the feedback on whether you should continue blogging. Tip number six is like, what's gonna keep you going because these are the people who are gonna be involved in your social network that you're involved with, which is a blog. Don't just be posting just to be posting online because you wanna get the views. Post where people that like the stuff that you talk about are. That's going to be where you're going to have the most positive feedback from. And you want to have positive feedback to motivate you to keep on blogging. I am in a community where when I started blogging, I wrote about the support of the city. People had a lot of positivity towards me because Baltimore has the reputation of this being a crab and a barrel mentality sick. The positive feedback that I got back from everyone was mainly because I was supporting everyone. The community that I decided to support was the artist community because the artist community complained so much about them not having any support at all. I want to be in a community that is going to support you. And I knew that because I supported them, they would support me in some type of way. Or I would hope that they would. Now, more so as I've grown out of the state of just wanting to have support from people and just wanting to talk about stuff, I have to find the community of which I want to talk about. My last tip, but not my least tip, 
Don't beat yourself up if your blog doesn't turn out like other people's. It is your voice. Why would you be upset that you aren't like someone else? You're your original self. So don't compare yourself to other people. You have to be yourself. You cannot be afraid to be yourself when you blog in because it is going to be your motivator. For years, I've been journaling and writing in my journal to myself. And when I read my own stuff, it's I laugh because it's like reading my own chapter book of my life. When I'm blogging, it's the same way. I'm writing to make myself be entertained, not other people. My motivation is me. I write stuff that I want to read. I don't care if anybody doesn't like what I write about or what I like, if no one likes my art or no one likes the blogs that I write, whatever. Because I had a passion and I was meeting new people because I was doing something that I really loved, I just kept on blogging. I would just say, don't beat yourself up. If you really wanna start a blog, just go ahead and shoot for the stars. You got this. Blogging, the most important thing is finding the platform, finding if you're motivated and finding out your name. And then all of that other extra stuff like the social media, posting it on social media and finding the right community will come in time with it. But I think that all of these things that I listed are the most important things and they are what motivates me to keep on blogging now. If you're the type of blogger that wants to try to make money, then like I said, you can go on to another video to find out how to make money blogging. This is if you just want to start a blog, period, based off of starting from hobbying and whatnot, then I gave you the steps, there you go. After I gave you all of those steps, this is right below the link to my blog. You can check me out, check out a few of the past blogs that I've written.